Welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. Today we're in Santa Cruz, California, hanging out with my buddy Bruce Canapa at Canapa Design. What's in this showroom is what I like, and, and I like all kinds of cars. An avid racer, renowned restorer, and passionate collector, Bruce knows cars like few people in the world know cars. Every car drives different, feels different, smells different, sounds different. This is where perfection in design and engineering come together to produce cars that are scary fast and Concorde perfect. It is fun hanging out with you, I got to tell you. Everything's about speed, baby. So get ready to experience Bruce Canapa, who operates at the outer limits of being totally, certifiably car crazy. We travel the world to talk with men and women who are passionate car guys to find out what makes people emotionally connected to their cars. It's time to get to the heart of the car guy. This is Car Crazy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here today in Scotts Valley, California, just north of the Monterey Peninsula in Pebble Beach at Canova Design. This massive complex is one of the great car guy venues, and we're hanging out with my bud, the man himself, Bruce Canova. Rich in racing history, restoration to claim, and collective genius, Bruce Canova always drives in the passing lane, always accelerating car guy fashion beyond the red line. And this is Bruce Canova, buddy. We have, how many years have we been talking about doing this show? We finally made it. Yeah. You're not exactly on the way to anywhere. Yeah. I mean, we're here in Santa Cruz or Scotch Valley, especially, right? We're in heaven. <laughs> we are in heaven. You feel like you're up in the mountains here. These are the coastal redwoods. We're right in the redwoods. It's uh, yeah. just beautiful. Just driving down the roads. You own these roads. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, yeah we've got great roads here. We've got roads that you can use these kind of cars. Yeah, on. I'll say. And you have a few friends around here that allow you to. Uh, to enjoy the roads on occasion. We do, <laughs> we do. <laughs> that works out pretty Luckily, good. the police departments are car guys here. Yeah. And like most car guys, Bruce's car crazy gene was ignited when he was just a kid. I was in the car business with my dad, and and he was in the what I call the regular car business. He yeah. sold new cars, and, and I didn't like that. I was modifying every car he let me put my hands on. Some people were born with a car crazy gene. Some inherited it from their dad. You had it from birth. When I was three or four, whatever, Going down the road, I would identify the cars as fast as I could that we were passing or, or really? coming on. Really? Dad said I didn't miss on very many. But. What started out as a fascination exploded into an obsession, which became a career and ultimately this mecca for go fast car guys. You walk into Canada Design, and this is the lobby. This is like, I mean, how do you describe it? I guess the collector car showroom is what it is. Right? It is, but this is what a lobby is supposed to be. Man, alive. And how do you pick the cars? These cars, you can buy these cars here? Yeah, collector cars is is a big part of our business now, and 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 I buy what I like here. What what's in this showroom is what I like, and and I like all mm -hmm. kinds of cars. I mean, you know, whether it's a Cobra or a Hot yeah. Rod or a Ferrari yeah. or a Porsche. And for me, what's fun about it is every car drives different, feels different, smells different, sounds different. Fitting that we should start our conversation with with a couple of Cobras. This well, is a pretty it, important year for Cobra. Oh well, it's a 50th anniversary of Cobra. Yeah. I had graduated from high school, had to go to college. Dad says, how much money have you saved? I'd saved $3,000. He says, you need to buy a practical car to go to college. So I bought a 427 Cobra. <laughs> That's as practical as it gets for me. <laughs> this is America's sports car. And I think this 50th anniversary is starting to raise that awareness. But this is the truest American sports car there is. Shelby's an icon. The car's iconic. And, and for all the right reasons, they're just a blast. I mean, this is as much fun as it gets. And there are a whole lot of examples of as much fun as it gets here at Canopy Design. But for the racing side of Bruce, there's one mark in his collection that's in a category all of its own. Porsches, real cars, the best driving cars in the world. <laughs> These are the cars that I found that the limits were beyond me. Really? There is a limit? This car is insane. I mean, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> This is the last version of the Porsche 935. I tell people, these were a Porsche street tub with almost 800 horsepower. I mean, you raced them, you, you know these cars. I mean, this is, not, this is not a detachment between builder and restorer and driver. You are all, all three of those. And that's how we restore them. We restore them as all three. We, we restore them cosmetically to look as near perfect as they can be, yet original. We, we do all the mechanicals in them. This car here is, is restored to a level where you go do the 24-hour yeah. Le Mans. It's yeah. that perfect. You can race it right, right now. 
And while this Porsche is truly special, it's still just one of many in Bruce's collection. Like the last 959 to be built, so advanced, it required a new law to allow it on American roads. It sits alongside the first NASCAR entry to top 200 miles per hour. If you like speed, this is your kind of place. Case in point is this boundary pushing T70. So seriously, this car is street legal. That's stretching the term, isn't it? It's a Lola T70. You know, they raced in 69, 70. These cars were incredibly successful. One of the most beautiful Lolas ever built. I mean, just look at it. I it's know. a piece of art. It's actually street legal. It has air conditioning. It has full upholstery. It has a very streetable 580 horsepower engine. Have you driven this car? I have. Have you? It makes a great noise. <laughs> so. So you have to be careful because everybody's watching you drive it. So you can't do this and be understated. No, You're not no, in this car. No, 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 not at all. Coming up, we'll head from the showroom to the workshop, where the genius of Canva design really takes place. Gives it a stealth look. It does. This is what we came for. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy, everybody. We're here at Canova Design in Scotts Valley, California, with the guy that is unbelievably certifiably car crazy, Bruce Canova. <laughs> well, the showroom is spectacular. What takes place behind the doors of Canova's workshop is where it's at. Capable of taking project cars from hopeless ambition to Concorde perfection. There is no other place I know of on the planet where you can have hot rods, Ferraris, <laughs> Mustangs, a gold wing and a roadster 300. I mean, unbelievable. Some people would call us confused. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been doing this since 1980, so we've got a fair amount of experience doing lots of old cars yeah. now. And these old cars attract some of the most respected members of our global car guy fraternity. This is a Pebble Beach quality hot rod. <laughs> well, and it happens to belong to a Pebble Beach judge. <laughs> this is Ed Gilbertson's? This is Ed Gilbertson's He's a chief car. judge of Pebble Beach. Yeah, a Ferrari guy. Ferrari guy, He's right? known for all his Ferrari activities. And look, look at Ed's hot rod. This car is so beautiful. I mean, it is Pebble Beach quality. It I know, is, and he, it he is wanted a hot rod. Concor hot rod. And this is an original 32. For the chief judge of Pebble Beach to be buying a car from you, um, I guess that's about as good a compliment as you can possibly have. You know, it's have. not bad, you know, not bad. <laughs> Even for a car as naturally stunning as the Mercedes SL, once Bruce's team applies their restoration magic, it becomes even more stunning. What have you done here? Because this car, it has such elegance, and yet it has a meanness to it. You know what I mean? When we do these cars, the mother, like the first thing I do is take the rims and completely paint the rim the color of the car. And so it gives it a stealth look. It you does. Know? I think it makes it, it go does. faster, too. It feels <laughs> like it does faster. This is such a gift to the car hobby to take these cars and put them in this condition. Generations after us be enjoying these cars. Well, and think about it. Car cars will never be built like this again. Yeah. Were we not born at the right time? Oh, perfect. I mean, <laughs> I think For about car it. Guys. You, know, I, you know, I was born when, when, when cars were just starting to get V8 motors and all yeah, kinds of things, yeah. and guys were trying to drive them too fast, oh, you know? Oh, so my goodness. It's just, just it's amazing. It's really cool. It really is cool. I need to show you one other really great restoration project before we leave the restoration shop. I think shop. I might know what you're talking about. <laughs> the skill being performed here at Canaba Design is becoming famous throughout every facet of the car hobby. And a quick look around this restoration shop will tell you why. These cars aren't just being restored, they're being perfected. Been reading about this car, I haven't seen it. Here she is. So this is the first production Duesenberg First Duesenberg. Ever this is the first they, there Duesenberg. Were, there were two prototypes, and then this became wow. the very first car that went to a customer. Wow. It has belonged to the same family for four generations. It was Castle and Cook Foods, but Dole, they, they, that's the family that started all that. And, and a lot of people don't know, they were missionaries in the Northeast, mm -hmm. part right, of the United States, right, right, moved right. to Hawaii. Yeah. Of course, all the humidity in Hawaii yeah, is it, not, it's not the greatest place to keep a, it, it wasn't a kind, great car. It wasn't kind to this car, <laughs> but our goal with this car was to save every square inch of original steel and aluminum and wood that we could. So we've really gone to so, a painstaking level of keeping everything original. Yeah. This is a car that we knew nothing about. And, and this is a car that I first declined to restore. But this customer, we do all of his cars, and he wouldn't let anybody else. Wow. So we said, OK. And, wow. But the key to that was finding 
you know, we Randy Ema got on board. Randy Ema, I mean, drawings. I mean, and he's everything. Had all, he had the drawings yep. for this and car. He's finding, sure. Yep, and he had parts. He's finding parts for us, and and we've had a lot of other people. The Auburn well, Court Museum. Be excited about the I project. think everybody's excited. Yeah. You know, we would never have thought we'd work on a car this no, old ever. You no. know, so we you're we're, a, we're enjoying you're, it. You go fast, guy. All these fast <laughs> cars, and you get to work on the original doozy. We're gonna see how fast it goes, though. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, get ready for a healthy dose of every car guy's favorite sound. This can't be. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here at Canva Design in Scotts Valley, California. Spend one day with Bruce Canva, and you'll know there is nothing he can't do with cars. From restoring to racing, Bruce's talents are seamlessly woven together, each one strengthening the other. So why do all these cars have numbers on the doors? <laughs> I wonder. Well, obviously we're in the motorsports area yeah, now. Yeah. Cars that get raced on tracks. We've got a lot of customers now <laughs> that, that, that are running vintage cars. Here's, this is a championship Datsun that Brad Frizzell drove in 76. He beat the factory team with this car. Wow. And, um, and, and, and this Can-Am car. This Can-Am car was the, is the Denny Holm 1970 M8D championship car. This is an RSR, and all the Porsche engines we actually do in-house. That's the one engine we do here. I know you're a Porsche guy, but there is this other car that keeps showing up in the shop quite a lot. No question, I've got an equal passion for Cobras. You, you know. do. This was a Shelby team car, and I bought this in an auction and then sold it to one of our customers, and of course now we maintain it because he vintage races it. And this year at Monterey, I just got the entries the other day. We have 51 entries of Cobras for that class. Do you really? 51. Do you really? Yeah, we were really? hoping to get 30. <laughs> you talk about thunder, it'll be some thunder. And some of these cars are simply too much fun to be limited to the track. What is this over here? <laughs> I don't see any numbers on it. And a license plate? What's the, what's the story? It's a race car that you drive on the street. Of course. This was an original IROC car, International Race of Champions car. In the first year, they used Porsches. And Porsches are great road cars, even as race cars. So yeah. uh, the color, I mean, you can't miss it. You can't, can't miss the color. <laughs> While a growing number of celebrity clientele are entrusting their most treasured cars to Canopy Design, there are a lot of great cars here that are part of Bruce's personal collection. But I haven't noticed that this is the car that's getting all the attention. I paid in advance. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> this car goes to Amelia Island. Oh, okay. and, um, and it's coming up real quick. Sure. It's coming up quick. I think they want to wow. pick it up on the 20th, as so they told us. So we're talking about a great concourse, so yeah. it's got to be right. Yeah. This is a car that I will race this year in all the Cobra events. I'll show it one time. And after that, it'll get chips and nicks on it, because wow. we'll just race it. Wow. Can we light her up for we, a moment? We can light it up. Charlie, <laughs> light this thing up, Charlie. Keep in mind, this is just a little engine, you know, it's only 289 cubic inches, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Enough, enough, enough. Who can possibly hear this car and see this car and not be in love? Oh, I mean, I it's just. <laughs> stir the heart of anybody. Absolutely. To sound that ferocious and look this beautiful. Yeah. All in one package. Yeah, and then there's no letdown yeah. when you drive. And it. you're gonna do a whole bunch of that in the day's end on this one. We're about to show you an assortment of cars that will boggle your mind. This is an ultimate piece of art, but driving it is the other half of that. Stay with us. to spend too much time here before you begin to realize that a lot of the most significant cars in the entire world end up right here at Canopy Design. Canopy Design houses an incredible array of cars, whether they're showroom ready, in the midst of restoration, or being built from the ground up. In fact, even Bruce's storage unit is a wonder to behold. This is the storage unit you've been telling me about. It is. It's our, it's our storage unit. <laughs> Not the typical storage unit. Look at these cars. My gracious. You know, when I was a kid, I had a box with shelves in it for my slot cars. And, okay. And I'm still a kid. You're still there. The box just so got bigger. Just, yeah. <laughs> you have a Volkswagen bus up here? You know, I love Volkswagen. Everybody loves Volkswagens, <laughs> right? So that's a 60 bus, 23 window okay. with a canvas top. Yeah. That's but the rarest. But you like to go fast. <laughs> this Volkswagen bus has all turbo Porsche suspension in it, brakes, steering, everything. Wait a minute. It's got a twin turbo Porsche motor. 
and a six-speed gearbox. Come on. This will be the Come world's on. fastest Come Volkswagen on. bus. Of course. <laughs> it is fun hanging out with you. I got to tell you. It's just, uh, everything's about speed, baby. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, this. I mean, yeah. you know I like Woody's, but uh, it doesn't get much better than this. Now, here. that's the premier Woody, isn't wow, it? Wow, look at this thing. For every viewer that we have, there's something here for them, you know? Uh, it doesn't matter what their passion. While the Bentley Woody is a one-of-a-kind marvel, it's just one of many astounding cars housed in Bruce's storage unit out of the public eye. And then you just happen to be storing a Ferrari GTO. <laughs> one of the most expensive cars in the world. Ferraris like this one are worth more than $30 million. In Ferrari's world, it was the first sports car that was really a true race car. I have driven one. I've been so fortunate to get to drive one. It's like dancing. I mean, really? it's just, it just slides through the corner and just keeps going forward the whole time. There's no experience like this car. I understand why they're worth that kind of money. But you had a dozen of them out on the track. We had a dozen of them at Monterey. Monterey. And the guys were, were driving them. You I mean, know, you yeah. got to have patient to drive those cars as hard as they were driving them in this kind of a car. I mean, that, that, well, was, I mean, that was an event. And like, you know, this car's a piece of art. This is <laughs> an ultimate piece of art, but driving it is the other half of that. Yeah. I understand why all those it's guys just, drive the cars. It's just spectacular. No matter where you go in this extensive facility, you are immediately confronted with yet another icon of motorsports. And this is the famous last Cobra. This car, it's so simple. And yet it's so stunning. Every time I look at it, really, it's very simple design, so clean. It just, it just takes your breath away. I was fortunate to get this car. This was a 6,000 mile car. And the fact that it was stored in Southern California, it had zero corrosion. This is original interior in the car. And you know, you almost just never get that opportunity. All the hardware on this car, all the nuts and bolts on the car are original to the car. Because they had no corrosion, we cleaned them and acid washed them and, and didn't even sandblast them and had them replated so everything stayed original to the car. This car is headed for Pebble Beach, right? This car is headed for yeah, Pebble so Beach. So it, yeah. it's embargoed now, right? That's I mean, right. It's, you it's, don't get too it's close. It's not to getting this moved car. now, no, this car. This is it. The next time anybody sees it other than us and your show yeah, now, you know? Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, decidedly different over here, this red job. Yeah. <laughs> and from the classic simplicity of the Cobra to the radical lines of this chop HHR, around here, race cars come in all shapes and sizes. Okay, so here's a car with some racing history. <laughs> not, not good history the first time. <laughs> not great. Not great. <laughs> but pretty amazing. Because it, it, you know, you're looking at a two-liter car with 1,400 horsepower, about, and um, in testing with half that much horsepower, it was at 255 at Bonneville in its first runs. Unfortunately, it it tried to pretend it was an airplane and yeah. and went upside <laughs> down. But it's been totally rebuilt now, and we're going to go to Bonneville, which will be my first time. But the plan is to go in October of you're this year. You're going to drive it. I'm going to drive it. Everybody thinks it has the capabilities to go somewhere between 280 and 300 miles an hour. I'd love to go there and get it done and wow. say I did it. Wow. So. Uh, you have a few more race cars around here. We do. You know, I had an area upstairs that was offices. We couldn't have that be offices, yeah. so it, it's all race cars <laughs> now. Coming up, we're going into Bruce's race car museum to see the really good stuff. I was working my way through the pack too fast. It just started tumbling. Yeah. You have to see this. Back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here with Bruce Canova at the Race Car Museum portion of this massive complex. I cannot believe this place. I mean, everywhere we go, we find these treasures. And of course, racing is your DNA. How many different race car circuits have you raced throughout all the years? Probably a couple dozen. Have you really? Yeah, it's been it's been really exciting because I've raced a lot of different kinds of things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The most fun I ever had was racing sprint cars at really? all the different tracks on dirt. You know, really? I, I the liked, most fun. The most fun. And also the most dangerous. Uh, I was at a at a, at a half mile dirt track and I was working my way through the pack too fast. I was trying to get <laughs> to the front in too much of a hurry and I drove over a wheel, which is easy in sprint cars. Yeah, and, absolutely, and that's what we're doing. It just started tumbling. Yeah. 15 or 16 times later, it stopped tumbling. <laughs> Talk about Pikes Peak. This is a Pikes Peak car that you had a lot of fun with, I know. Yeah, well, this was an era where, first of all, you were racing against the Unzers. It was the Unzers Mountain. Yeah, of course. And they had their yeah. sprint cars. So we <laughs> built an entirely different car to go to Pikes Peak, a 1,000-pound car, 450-horsepower Porsche twin-turbo engine. We knew that it, we were headed in the right direction because Bobby Unzer protested this car every other did day. He? <laughs> he did. He, from, when, from the time we showed up till the time we left. And by the next year, the car was outlawed. Any race car enthusiast could spend hours soaking up the history in this room. Every car is amazing, like this incredible Porsche 917. 
This is, this is another world here. This is the monster. This I mean, is the monster. It really even is. by today's standards, this is one of the fastest sports cars of all time. The frame weighs 100 pounds when the car is stripped of everything. It's all aluminum, no thicker than a lawn chair. This is a Porsche. I, Porsche 917 10. So you basically have a 12-cylinder twin turbocharged engine with 1,200 horsepower. Driving this car is the most exciting death wish <laughs> I've ever seen. This is 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds. It's 0 to 150 in five and a half. And it's 0 to 212 flat. That's not a myth. That's really how fast it is. And your feet are like right here. You know, I tell guys, right, it really right doesn't here. matter. Because if you hit anything, the engine's going to come right through the car yeah. anyway. You told me you've been in this car, and you pushed it. I just love this car. <laughs> <laughs> this is your kind of car. Yeah. And from the incomprehensible speed of the 917, we have one of the most famous cars to ever race NASCAR. This car draws such a crowd. There's such a huge NASCAR following, it's unbelievable. No, is this a show car, or is no. this the real deal? He right. campaigned this car. As near as they can tell, this is chassis number two. It's a, it's really? a documented really? car won about five of the super speedway races. It was Man. an original car when we got it. It needed restored, but it was an original car. Bruce's collection captures the speed, design, history, and of course, the progression of racing technologies and innovations. Well, here's an era of Indy cars that uh, is real near and dear to my heart. <laughs> hey, roadsters are the best. They're the most beautiful race cars that ever ran in Indianapolis. Unbelievable. Who did this one belong to? Uh, this was Andy Granatelli's car. Was it? Really? Yeah. That would explain all the chrome, and that was that yeah. was his thing, right? Yeah, Andy's cars were finished to the tens, <laughs> you know? That, that was a great era of, of Indy cars. It just was. Bruce, this has just been fantastic. I mean, after talking about doing this for so long, this is, there's no other place like this place in the world. I mean, where else do we find the first doozy and the last Cobra bin? <laughs> Restore in the same rough. I mean, it's it's just mind-boggling what you have here. No, we're fortunate. You know, we got great customers that are letting yeah. us do some really great cars. Well, this is one of the great destinations for car guys in the world. There's no question about it. Well, thank you. No question about it. You're my dear friend, but more than that, you're just a great it's a treasure pleasure. to the hobby. We have a surprise, though. <laughs> We've been talking about cars this whole time. We're gonna go for a ride in a 959. Right now? Right. We are? We are. I can't believe we're doing this. You have no idea. <laughs> and as we hit the road, you need to put Caterpillar Design on your bucket list. In all honesty, there's no other place like this place. <laughs> How much fun to have your driving skills in this kind of equipment. <laughs> no end of power. So much respect that you've earned by doing it right. I mean, just this passion for doing it right. Endless thanks to Bruce and his entire passion-filled team for making all of us just a little bit more than car crazy.